Amid Boeing's troubles that kept delaying Starliner, Sierra Space's Dream Chaser is like a ray of light in the night sky. Not disappointing us, Sierra Space and NASA recently brought encouraging news for the only winged commercial spacecraft destined for the International Space Station. It has reached the final testing milestones before a firm launch schedule late in 2024. So, what future awaits Dream Chaser's inaugural flight? Although Dream Chaser almost fell into the same pitfalls as Boeing Starliner, how did Sierra Space overcome these difficulties? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. On May 18th, inside a climate-controlled shipping container from NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Sandusky, Ohio, the Dream Chaser spacecraft, named Tenacity, arrived at Kennedy and joined with its companion cargo module, Shooting Star, which had arrived on May 11th. Upon arrival at Kennedy, teams moved the Dream Chaser Tenacity to the high bay inside the Space Systems Processing Facility, where it will undergo final testing and processing before its anticipated launch later this year. The remaining pre-flight activities at Kennedy include testing for acoustic and electromagnetic compatibility and interference, completing work on the spacecraft's thermal protection system, and final payload integration. Over the past several months, Dream Chaser and Shooting Star have undergone intense shock vibration and thermal vacuum testing at the sprawling Armstrong test facility. In December, the teams conducted shock tests with Sierra Space's launch partner, United Launch Alliance, ULA, using the flight separation system that will deploy the spacecraft from the upper stage of ULA's second Vulcan Centaur rocket. The two powerful vehicles were then stacked in launch configuration on the world's most powerful spacecraft shaker table inside the test center's mechanical vibration facility. Vibration testing, conducted over a five-week period, simulated the intense conditions and environment of a launch on a Vulcan Centaur rocket. After vibe testing concluded, the teams conducted another shock test, this time with the flight separation system between Dream Chaser and Shooting Star, to simulate the dynamic environment during the separation of the two vehicles before deorbit and re-entry. Next, the Sierra Space and NASA test teams transported the vehicles to the in-space propulsion facility at Armstrong for thermal vacuum or TVAC testing. Temperatures in space can range from extremely cold, hundreds of degrees below freezing, to several hundred degrees Fahrenheit due to radiation from the sun. TVAC testing is a realistic thermal simulation of the flight environment and is critical to ensuring mission success. For more than five weeks, Dream Chaser and Shooting Star were subjected to multiple cold hot cycles in a vacuum environment, between minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit and plus 250 Fahrenheit, with teams conducting functional tests at temperature plateaus to verify system performance. Sierra Space has released some stunning new imagery with this announcement. With its advantages, Sierra Space's space plane will complete all final tests by the end of this fall and is expected to launch by the end of the year. Tenacity will be the first in a series of flexible, reusable lifting body space planes designed for cargo to low Earth orbit. It features internal thrusters with three modes for precise maneuvering when docking with the ISS and fixed wings that allow it to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and autonomously touch down on Kennedy's runway at a 1.5G descent rate, a tenacious landing compatible with commercial runways around the globe. What won't return to Earth intact is Tenacity's paired cargo module shooting star, which arrived at Kennedy May 11th. The compact 15-foot, 4-meter module can hold up to 7,000 pounds, 3,175 kilos piece of cargo and add an additional external storage designed to burn up upon re-entry. Essentially, it and about 8,500 pounds, 2,590 kilos of trash will disintegrate thanks to the Earth's atmospheric pressure-fueled incinerator. Well, now I think we know why it's called Shooting Star. Finally, Tenacity is scheduled to launch from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, spend about 45 days docked at the ISS before bidding farewell to its cargo module and descending for a horizontal landing on Kennedy's runway. It'll return with up to 3,500 pounds of cargo, including critical scientific data from work conducted at the space station. Sierra Space has stated that they will operate a production line to assemble Shooting Star modules, with a new module needed for each mission. NASA has indicated that they will conduct at least seven cargo missions with tenacity, with the potential to expand the spacecraft's carrying capacity and extend missions up to 75 days. If all goes as planned, Dream Chaser Tenacity will join SpaceX's Dragon in conducting cargo missions to the ISS. But certainly, they will not concede behind a Dragon's crewed flights. Sierra Space is still manufacturing a second Dream Chaser vehicle named Reverence, integrating a life support system to be able to carry astronauts.
However, it cannot be denied that simply achieving a successful flight with Tenacity would already be a major accomplishment for the company. It's been a long journey for Tenacity and its manufacturer, Sierra Nevada Corporation, SNC. Dream Chaser has been in development since its announcement in September 2004 and was initially considered part of NASA's commercial crew program to transport astronauts to and from the ISS. However, it was overshadowed by Boeing and SpaceX in 2014 when those two companies were awarded commercial crew transportation capability, CCTC cap, contracts totaling $6.8 billion. SNC failed this challenge, and at the time, Dream Chaser seemed more like Dream Dashed. The reason for this failure was likely due to a landing gear malfunction during a drop test of the spacecraft in late 2013, which caused it to skid off the runway, raising concerns among government officials. In fact, building a spacecraft that can land like an airplane is no easy feat. If you check out Wikipedia, you'll find a list of about 60 spacecraft projects since 1945 with this goal. However, Dream Chaser quickly regained NASA's attention, and in 2016, a smaller unmanned version of the spacecraft was chosen by the space agency to be the first of its kind to transport critical cargo to the ISS, as well as bringing important cargo back to Earth. This was a very logical move by NASA, especially considering that up until that point, Boeing Starliner, awarded the CCTC cap contract in 2014, has faced numerous issues and delays and has yet to complete a crewed launch. After delays, the launch schedule was postponed to Saturday, May 25th, and even at the time up to this video, I'm sure Boeing is still continuing to delay their mission. To be honest, Boeing Starliner and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser both have had long development periods and equivalent delays, conducting numerous tests and encountering errors in their process. However, the difference lies in how they deal with these failures. While Boeing seems to be quite hasty in checking its technical methods, always confident that improvements will bring reliability, in reality, they overstate themselves. In contrast, Sierra Space might be slower but more systematic and thorough in their considerations, possibly not as flamboyant as their rival. Hopefully, the coming period for Dream Chaser will be smooth, as they're on the verge of a new breakthrough that will bring joy and pride to everyone. Dream Chaser will deserve the title of Mini Space Shuttle, continuing the glorious history that was cut short more than a decade ago. Now, let's broaden our horizons with some of the most notable examples in the aerospace industry. This will allow us to gain more perspective on other space planes out there besides just Dream Chaser. You can talk about them in the comments section, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to help us grow. First, it must be said that the space shuttle remained a glorious historical achievement in the realm of space planes. This was the most successful craft we have known, first flying in 1981 and completing its final flight in 2011. We cannot overlook NASA's secret of X-37B. To date, this unmanned spacecraft has completed a series of test flights, carrying undisclosed payloads on long-duration missions in Earth's orbit. Buran was Russia's answer to the space shuttle. Developed in the 1970s, the Buran program was essentially the Soviet Union's version of the space shuttle. This program ultimately ended after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, and the spacecraft was destroyed in a hangar collapse in 2002. Space planes are not exclusive domains of the United States or the former Soviet Union. Even the British are making efforts to build one. Called Skylon, the British aerospace company Reaction Engines is hoping to create the most elegant design for a space plane ever seen. This company has been working on the project since the late 1980s, after the official British space plane project for horizontal takeoff and landing, Hotal, was cancelled. However, to date, this space plane has seen significant delays, and it might not fly for at least another decade. Next, the RLVTD is another intriguing space plane concept currently being developed in India. An unmanned craft, the RLVTD, is considered a testbed for a potential future space plane developed by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. Finally, even the Chinese have their mysterious space plane. They've developed an unmanned reusable spacecraft to compete with the X-37B orbital test vehicle OTV, known as Shenlong, Divine Dragon, although details are scarce. China's state media company Xinhua claims that the flight is a breakthrough for China's space program. And that's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.